All right. Okay, let's get started. Unfortunately, I just realized that Google Hangouts changed however you start it, so I don't know how to do that. So we'll just record this, and I'll have to post this later for anybody who watches this. Uh, hopefully, I'll figure that out in the future. Well, let's get started on this problem right here. Am I a buffer? So we need to go through each of these and figure out what's a buffer. This will help us recognize what's a buffer, what's not. Okay, how about A? Is A a buffer? No, A would not be a buffer. So no, not A. You need an acid. A weak acid and it's conjugate base. So that's not possible. <coughs> Just have one item. What would be the pH of A actually? Seven. It's neutral. Compound. They're both uh, spectator ions. So it actually have a pH of seven. It would not be a good buffer. Okay, let's try the second one here. Uh, this is B a good buffer? Yeah, B is pretty good. We've got uh, an acid and its conjugate base, they're both at relatively equal mol or equal molarities. Uh, that one looks good. Okay, so B would be a buffer. Let's look at C. C, uh, I have a couple of problems with C. First problem is that I have a strong acid here and I need things that are weak. The second problem is this is not even the conjugate of it. So, I have uh, here not even the conjugate of the first one. So this is, for many reasons, this does not work. OK, how about D? D, first of all, I have a strong acid here, so that's weird. And then I don't even have its conjugate. So uh, also, D just doesn't work. OK, E, we have a strong acid here. And we don't even have its conjugate, but if you write out the reaction, uh, so we have a strong acid, I'll label this here, strong acid, 0 0.500 molar, and I just have a regular weak base here, it's 1.000 molar. This reacts, well, the acid loses its proton, <coughs> and the base gains the proton. Okay. Uh, since we have a strong acid, this reaction will go forward 100%. So the right hand side is favored. And. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, what, what was that thing about the unfavored side, if you remember that from last time, should have a zero. And here the reactants are the unfavored side, because it's going to go forward 100%, so the products must be favored. So I need to do a little stoichiometry on this one. Uh, I'm going to subtract off the lesser one and add it here. And notice what happened. Zero. 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 And I'll get another color out. I have, maybe I'll do some red. I have 0.5 molar of a weak acid, and I have 0.5 molar of its conjugate base. Is this a buffer? Definitely. Check. E is a buffer. It's definitely the hardest one to recognize, but because the strong acid caused the reaction, it actually created a buffer that was not there originally. And so, yes, there is a buffer. When will this happen? This will happen, let's say, if you have a weak base. If you have a weak base, if you have half the molarity or less of the molarity of a strong acid, that'll create a buffer. 
The opposite is also true. If you have a weak acid and you have a strong base that's about less than half or less than the molarity of the original, then those those situations will create a buffer like in this situation. So again, we had a weak base, it reacted with a strong acid, there was less strong acid, strong acid disappeared, and now we create a buffer. So yes for E. Yes for B and yes for E. Okay, any questions before I move to the next one? All right, put this away. Try another one. Uh, let's see, which one? I think this one's the best one to do next. This one here, we're trying to create a buffer solution. Uh, and so all we're going to do is use the henderson Hasselbach. Uh, and this is pretty similar to what you're actually going to do in the buffer lab. Are you doing the buffer lab yet? It's next week? Okay. So you're actually going to do this in preparation for your pre-lab for the buffer, this kind of calculation. Uh, so let me show you how this works. It can get people a little confused. Let me write down the henderson hasselbach first. Here's the equation we use in lieu of the ice table to do uh, calculations with any buffer. You can use the ice table too if you wanted to. Um, and so we want the volume of sodium acetate and it's 2.5 molar and we need the volume of that in order to prepare a 250 milliliter of 0 0.20 molar sodium acetate. Okay, so the first part of the question actually doesn't really need a buffer. It's just a little dilution sort of problem. So let's try that. Uh, and then once we finally mix these things up, uh, we'll need to do our calculations. So on these kind of problems where you're trying to create a solution, usually you'll have to work with this M1V1 equals M2V2 sort of equation. All right. Well, uh, initially, let's see what I had. I had, I know I have 0.20 molar of the 250 milliliters. And uh, let's see, I have 2.5 molar of some unknown volume. So just plugging in those numbers into our typical dilution formula from before. I solved for V2 through dividing by 2.5 and I got 20 milliliters. Is that what I got? Yeah, 20 uh, milliliters. So I needed 20 milliliters of the sodium acetate in order to prepare a 250 milliliter volume. So how much water did I end up adding to this? added uh, from the total final 250 minus the 20 I add 230 <coughs> milliliters of water so meaning if I started off with 2.5 molar and 20 milliliters if I add 230 milliliters of water that will bring me up to the total of 250 and that will be the concentration, the final concentration that I want Okay, so we know the volume, that's cool. I also want to calculate the volume of 6 molar stock acetic acid. Let me write that down. So I have uh, 6.0 molar acetic acid. And notice that the acetic acid and the sodium acetate, when you mix them, will make the buffer. We'll have an acid and its conjugate base. So they'll mix together to make water. 
And what do I want to know about that one? Calculate the volume of six molar stocks. So what volume of this uh, will I need to make a 250 milliliter buffer uh, with a pH of that buffer equal to 4.30. Let's move that up a little bit. Here's sort of what's going on. I want to make a buffer, and that's 4.30 pH. And I know I'm adding to this sodium acetate. And I know I'm adding acetic acid. That will create the buffer. Okay? So that's what I'm going to use to create the buffer. And what I know for this one, I'm going to have a 0 0.20 molar. So that I know that's 0 0.20 molar. I want to know how much of the acetic acid I should add to this in order to create the buffer at this pH. Okay, so that's the question. I want to buffer this pH. I know what I have of this one, but I need to know the volume of this one I need to add so when it dilutes, I get that pH. Here's where we go to the henderson hasselbach equation. Let's rewrite that. pH equals pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. Uh, the pH is 4.30. The pKa is 4.74. This is looked up. So that's the pKa of the acetic acid. So I had to look that up. And plus the log of the base over the acid. Well, let's see what I know. The base, I know, it's 0 0.20 molar. It's that number I found previously. Okay? So I figured out, okay, I'm using this amount of the sodium acetate, that concentration. But what I don't know is the concentration of the acid. So that's my one unknown. I'm going to solve for that. The concentration of the acid is going to turn out to be 0 0.551 mole. So again, if I mix, this is my known concentration of the conjugate base. If I have this concentration of the acid, I can make a buffer that's 4.30 pH. The problem is I still need to create this from, so this is from, <coughs> a uh, six molar stock solution of acetic acid. So what does that mean? I need to use the dilution formula one more time. So let's try that. I'm going to use M1, V1 equals M2, V2. So I know that I have zero 0.551 molar uh, of the acetic acid that I need in this solution. It says I need to make 200, from the question it told me that the final volume would be 250 milliliters. I know my stock solution is 6 molar and I don't know how much to add. So if I divide by 6 molar, the amount of water that I'll need is 23 milliliters. Uh, and that's of that 6 molar acetic acid. That's how much of that 6 molar acetic acid that I'm adding. So to make 250 milliliter uh, solution, then uh, 
what I need to do is say, well, I need to add 250 minus 23 milliliters of water, which is going to turn out to be 227 milliliters. Okay? So to make the full 250 milliliters, I needed 23 of that, and I'm going to add that to 227 milliliters of water to get up to the 250 volume that I was looking for in the first place. So how do I do that? How is this really going to happen? If I go back, if I redraw that picture I had before, how would you do this in lab? In lab, what you're trying to do is to make a volume of 250 milliliters of this. So what you're going to do is add uh, the sodium acetate and the acetic acid to this to make your buffer. And you're like, well, how do I get the right mol how do I get all the right molarities? Well, for the uh, sodium acetate, you're going to add. Uh, what was it, 20 milliliters of this. And then uh, for this one, we calculated 23 milliliters. So you're going to add that much of each from the stock solution. And then you're going to fill up to the line. Fill to the 250 mark. with water. Okay? So you're going to add both of these. That'll be 43 milliliters total. You're going to fill up to the 250 mark. They'll both be at the right concentrations and you'll have a 4.3 pH buffer. I know if you haven't done the calculations for your buffer lab yet, the first time seeing this is a little crazy because we've got these dilutions and the henderson hasselbach But just to review, just to make sure you got this, when we started the problem, we, we knew we wanted to make 250 milliliters of 0.2 molar uh, of the sodium acetate, so we had to figure out how much of each we add. We need 20 milliliters of the sodium acetate when we fill up to the total volume. For the other part of the buffer, I start with 6 molar. Well, to make the right amount of that, I had to calculate the molarity of the acid using henderson hasselbach and then I got the volume of the acetic acid to add, and once I have that, now I know that in my solution I'm adding 20 of this and 23 of this from my calculations and I'm filling to the mark with water. So I'm really adding... 250 minus 43, so 207 milliliters of water. Yeah? Uh, wouldn't the molarities be off because it's supposed to be water? No, not necessarily. You can have more solute in there, and as long as the total volume is in there, that's how we calculate the concentration. It's the moles of the solute divided by the total volume we have, really whatever that volume is. Yeah. So the molarities would actually be right on. Some of it, you're right, is being diluted by the other. That's why you have to be careful as you go through the calculation. Okay, ready to move on? Okay, then finally, I have this one. So while the one we just did is kind of a, it was a problem we didn't do in class last time, it's just using henderson hasselbach and dilution, this one is actually mimicking the problem we did last time in class for buffers. And I understand if you're having trouble, you might need to rewatch the video after I eventually am able to figure out how to post it. Um, but uh, you need to get used to these kinds of problems for the exam. All right. Uh, let's start on part A. Do I expect, so I have one molar HF. Is the pH going to be less than or greater than uh, 7? Less. 
Why? Because it's an acid. Okay, so that was a gimme. B. Now calculate that pH. Okay, how do you do that? This is from the previous chapter. You write your general equation for an acid. Just like that. Ice table. And then we fill in the ice table. Uh, I have one molar of this. Ignore water. Zero, zero. And because it's a weak acid, I have to use the ice table. Uh, it has to shift to the right towards the zero. So the plus x is on the zero side. And the E line is merely the sum of the I and C line. Okay. K, A. For this, uh, which you did have to look up, it's 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4 to do this problem, is x squared over 1 minus x. I'm going to what? Yeah. Uh, since I have a weak acid, I'm going to assume uh, x is a lot less than 1, or super, super small. So that causes this to equal x squared over 1, which is this x squared. So it was 1 molar, right? Yeah. So the square root of that turns out uh, results in x being 0 0.257. And that is equal to the H3O plus concentration from the E line of the ice table. So now I know how to find pH. pH is equal to negative log H3O plus negative log of 0 0.257. And that is a pH of 1.59. So yes, it's less than 7, it's acidic, it's what we expected from part A. Alright, so this, we haven't done any buffer stuff yet. Okay, let's look at part C now. Part C said, a second solution contains KF and HF. Do you expect the pH of the second solution to be greater, less than, or the same as the first? What do you think? It's going to be greater. Why? Because I just added KF. KF is a conjugate base. If yeah, I add a conjugate base, it's going to increase the pH. The other way you can explain this is to say, oh, KF, F minus is the common ion. It's going to cause a shift to the left. H3O plus concentration will go down. And the uh, pH will go up. So either way you think of it, it's fine. Um, but we're expecting the pH to go up because we added a base. Okay, so part C now. C. Uh, oh, great. Great. Okay, part D uh, is the calculation. And part D simply asks, what's the pH? So for part D, I want to know the pH of this new solution. How do you do this? There are two ways to do this kind of problem because I have a buffer. So I will show you at least part of the first way and I'll actually solve it a different way. How do you do this? You rewrite the uh, equation for the acid. Okay, rewrite that. Bust out your ice table. Okay, we're trying to find pH. You need the ice table if it's a weak acid, even if it's a buffer. This was 1.0, I believe, and I believe this was 1.5 molar. Ignore water, zero. So they gave both of these numbers to me in the question. Remember that this one came from KF. Why did I ignore K? Spectator ion is the conjugate of a strong acid. It's neutral. I don't care about it. It's not going to contribute to the pH. This will shift which way, right or left? To the right, towards the zero. So the plus sign is where the zero is, on the side of the zero. 1 minus x, 1.5 plus x, and x. You could now, if you wanted to, set up a Ka equals 1.5 plus x times x over 1 minus x. So you set up your equation and so forth. Go through the ice table. I'm not going to continue this method because there's a much easier way to solve this one. I could have used what equation? Or henderson hasselbach because it's a buffer. henderson hasselbach is actually takes the place 
of all this work and the work I would have done here. So I don't need to do all this. I can just use the henderson hasselbach once you realize it's a buffer. So the pH is the pKa, which is the negative log of Ka, plus the log of the base over the acid. The base was 1.5 molar, the acid is 1.0 molar. This is the negative log of Ka. Ka we looked up from before, from part B. This turns out to be 3.36. So this simple calculation here in purple substitutes for the ice table, substitutes for this equation, you don't have to make the assumption. You don't have to solve for x. You don't have to take the negative log of it. I skipped all that and just did this. Okay? You can do it either way on the exam. I don't care which way you do it. Uh, you just have to do something. Oh, okay. Good question. There was a question about is the zero on the unfavored side? Let's back up to the ice table. Right or left? Which side will be unfavored? The right side will be unfavored because it's a weak acid. K is going to be really small. And so because K is really small, but this side is favored. It doesn't go to the right very much. And there is a zero on the unfavored side. So I'm cool. I won't need any stoichiometry at all. Another question, yes? Henderson Hasselbach, uh, yes, this is a confirmation only if there's a buffer. How did I recognize it was a buffer? Because in the question it said it has KF and HF. That's the acid and its conjugate base. So you need to recognize that all by yourself. Yeah, I have the acid and its conjugate. So I may or may not use the word buffer in the question. Okay, was there another question out there? Yes. Oh, whoa, whoa, almost killed me there. Careful. Okay. Uh, was, did I write down the wrong K? Oh, maybe I did. This was, let me double, oh yeah. <laughs> I wrote down the wrong K. 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. Is that the issue? Cool, thank you, thank you. Okay, so you get 3.36, it's higher than before because I added the buffer. Okay, let's go to the next part now. Uh, e, I'm going to add 0.2 moles of HCl to 2 liters of the second solution. Okay, first of all, will the pH increase, decrease, or stay the same for the second solution? Yeah, if I'm adding an acid, it better go down. Okay, so I'm expecting it to be less than 3.36. And actually, I'm going to expect it to be greater than uh, the original 1.59. The reason is uh, buffer resists pH change. So I expect this to go down, but very little, because it's a buffer. So I'm adding an acid to a buffer. I expect it to go down very little. So uh, that was part... E, E, decrease, so 3.6 will decrease a little. Okay, F, though, was find that number, so how do we do that? Well, figure out what's in solution. We have HF, we have F minus, and we have uh, HCl, which is H3O plus, a proton. So, H. 3O plus is going to react with the first one or the second one? Yeah, it, these two want to react. See, this, this is my buffer. And the H3O plus wants to react with the conjugate base of the buffer. The acid will react with the base. So the added acid will react with the base of the buffer. So you need to figure that out before you write the, the reaction down. Let's write this reaction now. The reaction is F minus will react with H3O plus, that's from the HCl, to go to HF plus uh, H2O. 
So the F gained a proton from HCO plus, so HCO plus became one. Okay. Uh, now let's write down how much of each we have. F minus, that was, let me do this in a different color, 1.5 molar of, okay, I'll write the molarity down. This was 1.5 molar. This was 0 0.20 moles. I know they're different units. We'll work on the units in a second. And this was 1.0 molars. Okay. What's the favored side here, right or left? The right side is, how did you know that? Did it the right side? Okay, all right. Well, what if I did that? <laughs> how do you know? It is the right side. How do you know that? There we go. This is a strong acid. That will cause this to go 100% to the right. So remember when you have a strong acid or strong base, it'll cause the reaction to go to the other side 100%. That's why it's strong. It does stuff like that. Okay, so the unfavored side is which side, right or left? This is the unfavored side if it's going forward. So I need a zero here on the unfavored side. It must react. Okay, so what I'm going to do is convert everything to the same units and then do that calculation. Uh, and uh, this is the stoichio uh, stoichiometry concept. And because we're working with stoichiometry, uh, I should change everything to moles. So 1.5 molar, and it said in the problem 2 liters. So that'll cause us to have 3.0 moles. This was given in moles. 0.2 moles, and then the 1.0 molar times 2 liters, uh, that'll get us 2 moles. Okay, so uh, that's everything in moles. What I'm going to do is subtract off the smallest amount, which is the limiting reactant, and add it to the other side. So it's reacting away on the reactants, adding to the product. Okay, so now I have a zero on the unfavored side. Did I mess something up? Oh, this is 2.8. Oh, I went the wrong way. 2.8 more. Okay, now I have a zero on the unfavored side. How am I going to find the pH of this? I could use the ice table because it's, we're talking about weak things here. Or well, what's the easier way? And this is not why I still have a buffer. I'm adding acid to a buffer, so the buffer's still there. Let's do it the easy way. Now, if you want to do it the hard way, that's fine. You're into that. Whatever. I'm going to do it the easy way. I need to save in. pH is the negative log of Ka, that's the pK, plus the log of the base of the acid. Negative log, let me get the Ka right this time. Uh, it was 6.6, .6, I believe, times 10 to the minus 4. Plus the log, all right, watch this little magic here. Uh, the base is F minus, right? Base is F minus. So I'm going to put here 2.8. And the acid was HF, and that's 2.2. Why is it okay for me to use moles right here? It's the same volume. Same volume. So because it's the same volume, I don't care. Uh, you could divide by the volume if you want, but by both of them, I'll divide by 2 liters. So it cancels out. This is going to end up being 3.28. So the pH went down from 3.36, but just a little bit because it's a buffer. We didn't expect it to change very much. Okay, this is what I consider a full-on buffer problem, okay? So if you wanted to see uh, the third one we just did, this one right now, if I asked you everything, everything, it would be this problem. If I asked you just about the henderson hasselbach it'd be like the second problem we did today, okay? Ready to move on? Okay.
Make sure you can do that, stop. Check. I know it's crazy. If it's hard for you all, imagine the other classes. They're hitting their heads against the wall right now. Okay? It's not just not just our class, it's gonna be hard for everybody. Once you get used to it, you're gonna see, oh, I'm actually doing the same thing every time. Okay, but what when you see it the first time, you're like, whoa, this is craziness. What I did, what is a buffer? You should be able to do pH calculations. Um, if you add, I'll give you a little tip. If I'm adding something to a buffer, I have to do stoichiometry first. If it's just the buffer itself, I won't need that stoichiometry thing. So that's a little tip for you. You do stoichiometry, then you use the equilibrium, ice table, or Henderson Hasselbach, and here's that equation. And today, we're going to focus on this monster right here. It's titrations and indicators. Yes. All right. Uh, let me give you an interesting thing here. Uh, the same guy, you know that, uh, if you don't know, the state flower for California is poppy. And if you walk around Davis, you'll see a lot of people have poppies in their front yards, different places. That dye that causes that color is actually the same dye in a corn flower. But because of the different acidity of the sap, it turns in the poppy kind of a reddish orange and in the corn flower blue. And, but it's the same, same dye, but because of the acidity of the flower, it actually acts as what we call an indicator. It tells you by different colors how acidic or basic something is. Here's a, a picture. Uh, of course, you have a black and white printer, so it's out for you. Don't worry, we upgraded in the department. There's a poppy if you haven't seen one before, and there's a corn flower. And that, again, the same dye. This is a natural uh, dye or indicator. We also have the ones you use in lab, and I'm sure you've used a lot by now. Phenolphthalein, thymol blue, all kinds of stuff that turn all kinds of colors depending on if it's acidic or basic. That's nice for us because we look at the color and we're like, oh, I know that it's basic because it's that color. Or I know it's acidic because it's that color. Uh, phenolphthalein is one you've used a bit in lab, and that's this compound right here. Phenolphthalein, basically what happens, it's colorless when it's an acid, and it becomes a, a hot pink color when it's a base. And that's because as an acid it has these protons here, and as a base it loses those protons. And it changes form, once it changes form, it absorbs light differently and has a different wavelength of light. Okay, so there's protons on the indicator when it's uh, in the acid form and no proton when it's in the base form. That's the indicator. And this is all section 3, by the way, page 83 of the textbook and page, no, 83 of the reader, page 710 of the textbook. Uh, here's some uh, tons of indicators. And you can pick the indicator based on the pH you're working with. So you can figure out, okay, at what pH am I actually turning colors here? So we picked the, pH, we picked the indicators for you in Chem 2A, but uh, if you knew that information, you could pick it for yourself. Now, what's a good place for it to turn color? Well, as you've already seen in lab, and we haven't talked about it in class, this is a titration curve. You've started doing titrations already. This is a strong acid, acid strong base uh, titration curve. And what we do is, at the inflection point, so where it turned from concave up to concave down, that's called the equivalence point, as you see there in the picture. And we want, at that high slope, that's where we pick the indicator. So we want the indicator to turn colors when the uh, it turns uh, when the inflection point happens. So actually, any of these indicators would actually work fine. It doesn't have to be the one right in the middle, just as long as it's close to that inflection point. Okay, so that's how we choose indicators for you. Uh, let me write some stuff down now. But what if we just took a break? 
How's that? That sounds better. Okay, let's take a break and we'll resume in a minute.